welcome to the Kid Men Podcast with Dr. Val and Dr. Virginia, where we talk about everything Kid Men. And pull back the curtain on some of the surprises and challenges in children's ministry that nobody prepares you for. I'm Dr. Val, and together we have over 45 years of experience in children's ministry. I'm Dr. Virginia. Valerie and I met over 10 years ago in our doctoral program at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. We are excited to share with you all the great stuff that we have picked up over the years. We want to minister to you, the children's minister. Welcome, friends. We are so excited to have you with us here today. You know, there has been a lot of chatter happening on social media this week. <laughs> Are you <laughs> like you've noticed that for some reason uh, in all of my areas of what I follow on social media, I feel like this just been a little bit all over the place. I don't know if you've noticed that as well this week or not, Dr. Virginia. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, people seem to always have opinions about things and people seem mm-hmm. to always want to, you know, voice their opinions about things. Mm-hmm. But I have been seeing a lot of questions and a lot of discussion mm-hmm. about a, an important topic that I thought would be fun for us to kind of jump into today. And that is children's worship. Yeah. And yeah. so I thought that this might be a good opportunity for us to chat about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many options, so many different ways to do it. Um, just sort really of thinking are. through all of those different avenues. Yeah. And, you know, this is one of those topics, too, that over the years, as long as I have mm. been in ministry and I have been in ministry for a long time, uh, but for all of these years, children's worship has always been kind of a hot button topic mm-hmm. yep. because yep. people feel so strongly oh. whether or not there should be a separate worship for children right? or if children should be included in the worship center with the families for family worship. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of wanted to start off this discussion right now by saying that we are not here to say one way is better than the other. We have no magic answer. <laughs> we do not. <laughs> Because quite honestly, we have both served at churches where we had children's worship and we've served at churches that have only had family worship in the worship center. Mm -hmm. So we have done it both. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I can really say that for me, the importance is what your church family has come together to decide on what is best for your Mm -hmm. community. Mm-hmm. because there are so many variables to it. Yes. How many yes. children you have that visit your church that do mm-hmm. not come with a family mm-hmm. it, you know, that needs to, to, to read into your decision right. on whether or not, you know, you, you have the staff and the resources and the volunteers mm-hmm. to be able mm-hmm. to provide a quality children's experience mm-hmm. So there are all sorts of different philosophies about it. And and we don't want to jump into that today. But what we did want to talk about is that whether or not you have children's worship or if you have children worshiping with families in your worship center, we want to make sure that you have thought through opportunities Mm -hmm. where you can make it intentional. Yes. And find the best way for children to be able to worship and learn and grow in their relationship with God. Mm-hmm. And yep. so that's why we thought we would just spend a little bit of time talking about how we handled some of those questions that I've been seeing this week on social media in different areas. We wanted to talk just a little bit about how you might find ways to more creatively help your ministry be more effective when it comes to children's worship. I I really do think, and this is, this is something that I saw this week that I felt like just really hit my heart hard. And it was one of the reasons why I thought about us having this topic. I I want us to chat for just a minute about the church's philosophy about how children are welcomed into the worship service. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw so many comments from people Mm -hmm. who said the first time they visited church with their children, they weren't comfortable to just drop them off on the children's hall or the preschool hall Mm -hmm. with strangers when they didn't know the schedule and they didn't know the security policies. And so they were, were visiting the church for the first time by taking their children into the worship service with them. Mm -hmm. And I was just overwhelmed with the comments that people were saying that they were literally ushered out of the worship center and told that they had to stay in 
a viewing room or they had to take their children to the children's ministry. Have you heard people talk about that before, Dr. Virginia? Uh, you know, it's one of those things like, just like you, I've seen it online. Um, it's not something that I personally have experienced, thankfully, right. but yes, I I've seen it online. And I think, um, you know, I think churches and ministries, you're right. We have to be, take a very hard intentional look about the sort of first impression we are making, right. the sort of first impression we want to make. Mm-hmm. Um, just like what you're saying, communicating that we value people over production value. Yeah. Um, and, and just making sure that in whatever policies or procedures or whatever we adopt, that we are, you know, aware of right. what that communicates yeah. and that right. our policies and procedures accurately reflect our philosophies and our desires. Right. Because if you say you want young families and you say right. you want children and you say you value children, right. then our practices must align with that. They, they, they have to. And, mm-hmm. and this is the thing. So many times we have this mindset of this is my church. This mm-hmm. is my row. This is my experience what I am walking away with. And it's not that those things aren't valuable. Yeah. But as a church body, we should be evangelistically mm-hmm. centered mm-hmm. enough that we are wanting to welcome all people into mm-hmm. our worship service. That's where they can first be introduced mm-hmm. to God in the love of Jesus and the word. Mm-hmm. Amen. And we have often had parents that have come to church for the very first time themselves Mm -hmm. with children. How can we expect them Mm -hmm. to learn about the church? Right. And how do we expect them to know how their children should behave Mm -hmm. if they've never attended church themselves Mm -hmm. before? Yeah. And we should welcome that. Right. We should welcome families coming in and maybe not knowing where to sit or how to drag right. or what to do right. because we right. want right. to share the love of Jesus with them. Right. So that means we have to be patient and understanding and help them have the best, most positive experience we can. And so I think that that's just vital. Amen. And you know what? And, and, you know, just like what you're saying, it's easy to think, Oh, this is my pew. This is my church. This is my worship experience. It's not. (laughs) It's God's pew. It's God's church. And we are here to worship God. And so, you know, and, and it is, it's, it's, of course, everyone views everything through their own perspective and through their own lens. And so it's so easy to think that way. Right. But the reality is, is that, you know, this building, this pew, our lives exist to serve Christ. Right. And so, you know, our calling is to do that effectively. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is our focus. That is our calling. Um, And we, we need to make sure that we are helping families be able to have Mm -hmm. the most positive worship experience that they can. Mm -hmm. And so that is the way that we make sure that we help first time guests learn their options Mm -hmm. to see what they have available to them, whether it is a viewing room, if they do have a fussy child and they do want to take a baby Mm -hmm. into a viewing room. We want to let them know that it's there. You know, we want to provide materials for the kids if they are in worship service. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. I think it's really important that we have information and helpful things for visitors to be able to help them through, you know, the understanding the worship service and understanding what to do. But Mm -hmm. I don't think that it is very welcoming to families to be told that their children can't mm-hmm. participate in worship. Okay. Every single person that made a comment on the social media site that I saw this discussion happening this week mm-hmm. said the same thing. They never returned to that church mm-hmm. again. And several said that they never returned to church Any again. Church. Mm-hmm. And I know that I, I know that a lot of people are saying, okay, you have to take what you see on social media with a grain of salt. But and, and I understand that. But I really do feel like that those experiences were valid for those people, mm-hmm. that they felt like they were not welcome 
Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important for us to find a way that we can, because personal worship is valuable, but it is not more valuable than reaching out to people who do not know Christ Mm -hmm. or who have not met our church family yet. Yeah. We, we want to make sure that we give them that great first experience. And so we have to make a decision about what do we believe as a church? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's where the whole children's worship decision comes in mm-hmm. is that as a staff with input from your church family, mm-hmm. you have to sit down and decide what is our philosophy about mm-hmm. how we are raising our children in mm-hmm. church. Yeah. And you have to decide, okay, you know, these are our options. Mm -hmm. What do we think is most going to benefit our church Mm -hmm. families and how Mm -hmm. can we best serve? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that that's important. So I thought what we would do is to sort of go through different options Mm -hmm. for children in worship and talk about some of the things that we've done in the past, just to give you an idea of some Ways that you, and and hopefully, even if you don't hear a specific answer to a challenge that you are having right now, that maybe it will spark some inspiration uh, for a conversation to be able to figure out how to solve an issue. But let's start with preschool through kindergarten. Yeah. Um, Typically, most every church that I have served with, that I have been a part of, does have extended teaching care during Mm -hmm. the worship service for families. Mm -hmm. So there is some sort of option, whether or not it's that your church has a Bible study or a Sunday school for the first hour and then worship for the second, or if your church has multiple services, so you have Bible study and worship all going on at the same time in the morning. However, you know, your church may do that right now we are currently attending a church that just has one hour. We just have a work. So the Mm -hmm. children have, you know, the worship at the same time that the, the pastor is teaching. So we don't have the two hour option. So we just have that one hour. And so, because we meet in a, we're meeting in a school building. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, we know that there's all of these little kinds of details that you have to work through most all churches have an option for at least birth through Mm four-year-old to have an extended teaching care. Mm -hmm. And basically this is having children in a Bible study classroom for the duration of the worship service, whether that's an hour, whether the pastor goes a little over an (laughs) hour. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a set time, (sighs) but it's having children in your care Mm -hmm. during the entire service. And this is my heart that is always that. And if you've listened to us long enough, you know this about me. I believe that we are not babysitting during worship service. Amen. You know, that is a hill I do die on. I, I feel like that, when we have children in our care, we are teaching them about the love of Christ and we are sharing with them the word of God. And so um, I do think that let's just start off with like babies through twos. Mm -hmm. Um, Typically they do stay in a self-contained classroom and I think it's safer for them to stay in a self-contained classroom, babies through twos. Yes. Um, But you know, they do have the ability to be able to listen to worship songs and sing Mm -hmm. worship songs and to hear Mm -hmm. a Bible story while they're eating a snack or a a leader speaking a Bible verse over them as they change a diaper or, you know, as they rock them to sleep, Mm -hmm. Um, having some sort of lesson and materials for Mm -hmm. your volunteers for babies through twos to be able to be an intentional time. Of worship. And you know, one thing that's so funny, just talking about babies through twos, one of the things that um, one of my two-year-old Sunday school teachers told me recently is that the two-year-olds have um, a certain VBS song (laughs) that they request, you know, in their little two-year-old way, you know, Uh she knows what they mean, that that they want to listen to this particular VBS song on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. And so you know, don't underestimate. And I mean, this is one of those things that we'll say till we're blue in the face. Yes, um, 
you know, don't underestimate what very small children can learn, right. remember, memorize. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so being intentional in our time with babies and toddlers mm -hmm. is so valuable, so valuable. It really is. Having the word of God spoken mm -hmm. over them mm -hmm. makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And so those those leaders, sometimes it's the hardest for those leaders to kind of plan something because yes. they don't think that the kids are old enough because or unless, to even conceptualize you know, how the hour could go or what could yeah. they even do. And yeah. 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 So I think that's where we have to really mm -hmm. be intentional with providing them with music. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is the classroom where I would post the Bible verses on the walls. I would post the Bible story on the walls, mm -hmm. literally for them so that they're, as they're sitting in the rocking chair, rocking, they're looking yeah. at the wall and they can just tell the story right. as they're rocking or as they're playing. It's just speaking mm -hmm. that word. And so they don't, those teachers don't, I mean, I, I've loved it when I have had teachers that have made it very intentional and yeah. have planned, but I don't think that that's a, an expectation that mm -hmm. you can realistically hope for every single for everybody. Sunday. Yes. No. Yes. And so I think for those ages, especially we have mm -hmm. to be very intentional about how we provide them with the materials to be able mm -hmm. to do that. Now with the threes, fours and kindergartners, it's a little bit different because yeah. they are older and they can do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I have always, I, I was trying to think about this earlier. I feel like I've pretty much always had threes, fours and kindergarten in extended teaching care mm -hmm. when yeah. I have been the children's minister at the church. So we have had to be very intentional about a rotation for volunteers for those mm -hmm. classrooms. Yes. But also be very intentional with the lesson and the materials that are provided mm -hmm. so that these kids are fully engaged during the entire worship time. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite ways to do it is to honestly set it up a little bit like vacation Bible school. Mm -hmm. where I would have a room with people who enjoy leading music with kids, a room of people who enjoy doing crafts or, you know, art activities with kids. And then a person who enjoyed doing the Bible story lesson. Yeah. And so we would literally with the threes, fours and kindergartens, because it's really hard to have three year olds and kindergartners in a room together and really be able to maintain any kind of focus. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, it's kind of nice to have them. And, and honestly, I promise in, in at times when I didn't have the volunteers mm -hmm. and I did not have the rooms to be able mm -hmm. to do that, I still had centers in the classroom yes. so that my yes. threes stayed together, my fours stayed together and my kindergartners stayed together. And we rotated within the classroom centers because again, it's really hard to do an activity with that wide range mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. ages. But I think it's really helpful because not only is it giving them movement where they've been in a Sunday school or a Bible study yes. classroom for that whole first hour mm -hmm. and it gives them that, that moving around, but it also helps with your volunteers because you have a volunteer that's just prepping the song each week. Yeah. They're just prepping a craft each week. They're just press, you know, so they're not having to do the whole thing. It's easier. Yeah. And, and so it's easier to find a way where you can kind of give them a little bit of change. And then on those days in the years when the time of year, when we could go outside, yeah. we would do a little bit of a playground moment mm -hmm. in that rotation so that they're not just out there the whole time, but right. they also get to be out there a little bit. They get to move and get some fresh mm -hmm. air. Yes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. really kind of set it up like a little mini vacation Bible school, you know, each Sunday morning. Yeah. I love that idea. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so now have you, traditionally had kids threes, fours, and fives in an extended teaching care situation yes. or have you? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. So we sure have um, at, at the churches that I've been at. Um, sometimes they've been in sort of self-contained rooms. Um, sometimes I've done um, like a large group time um, with those ages when there's the space has been available. And so, yes, but yes, de definitely through kindergarten. Right. Yeah. I think that one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that there are a lot of churches when they have family worship where the children are included in the worship center during worship service that sometimes they do begin that at kindergarten mm -hmm. so that the kindergartners do begin to go in. I worked with a lot of churches right. who had that where the kindergartners would go into the worship service. And I think that if you're going to especially have children 
that age in the worship service, I think parents do need some help yes. with yes. understanding what children at different ages can process mm -hmm. and understand mm -hmm. and sit through. Right. Like what, what are accurate expectations mm -hmm. of them at this age? Absolutely. Right. Because it is really hard to expect any preschooler through mm -hmm. kindergarten mm -hmm. to be able to sit for a full hour in a worship service or more. listening to a <laughs> yeah. pastor or more, you know, yeah, yeah. usually it's okay during, you know, the music right. and beginning things because it's, you know, it's, it's interactive move. and you're standing up and they yeah. can do things and, and noise is not noticed as well, you know, when music yeah. is going, but it is really, it's, it's, it's not really feasible to expect a kindergartner to sit mm. in a pew with nothing and just yeah. sitting with their attention on a pastor Right. during an entire worship right. service. And so I think it's really helpful at that point, if you can maybe do a class mm -hmm. for your parents mm -hmm. before they make that transition mm -hmm. to give them some suggestions on mm -hmm. how to engage a small child right. in a worship service. Right. And so that may come with helping them understand that they might need to have a big church bag, mm -hmm. you know, that has, a, a worksheet in it or yeah. some coloring pages in it. And it's wonderful when the church can provide those mm -hmm. by having them match the sermon. Yeah. So that if the pastor is talking about David and Goliath, if there's right. a, a picture of David and Goliath that they can be mm -hmm. coloring at that point. Yes. Um, I think is incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. um, worksheets that have just that opportunity for them to write and to draw yes. as they listen. Little sermon notes pages mm -hmm. for kids. There's tons of those on the internet that you can right. find. There yes. really is. Mm -hmm. And, and I've always, I have always tried to provide those for my mm -hmm. families. Um, and I think that they are something that is very helpful to parents, but mm -hmm. also helpful to keep kids engaged. Yeah. And, and I want to yeah. talk about that again in a minute when we talk about the older kids too, but um, I think that especially for kindergartners, having some crayons in that paper mm -hmm. and maybe some quiet manipulatives mm -hmm. with them, something that they can can do quietly, but still mm -hmm. keep them engaged so that they are not expected just to sit quietly and just, you know, stare at the pastor as he speaks. Because even if it's say quote unquote, best case scenario, and a child is sitting quietly staring at the pastor, what do you think they're thinking about? Right. <laughs> are they really absorbing the sermon or are they space yeah. cadets? Right. You know, right. So. so you want to engage them yes. in some way. Yes. And so, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that more in a minute, but, um, but I think that it's really helpful when we can provide. And I think that you mentioned too, when we were talking about this earlier, that there are a lot of churches who provide those bags each week, the whole yes. bag, like yes. it being yes. more of a disposable so bag. Like well, no, it's like you sort of check it out each week and it's got oh, okay. your worksheet on David and it's got a little activity or even like, like you said, like a little quiet craft that you can put together oh, on God. David. And then you turn your bag, you know, like a canvas type bag back oh. in and then it's restocked for the next Sunday with, you know, activities that relate to the sermon. So See, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. So, yeah. See, I think that that's, that's a really wonderful thing to have if, if you can, can get that together for families, yeah, especially yeah. That, if you do that. So um, one of the other things that I have noticed this week, and I don't know why, if for some reason, I just really noticed this topic being discussed a lot this week, having a children's sermon mm. in the worship service. Yeah. But still having a children's worship service. Okay. Yeah. And so again, I think this is something that your church staff really needs to sit down and discuss mm -hmm. about the importance of having a children's sermon in your mm -hmm. adult worship service. A lot of it depends on whether or not you are having them stay all the time in the worship <laughs> service or right. if they are transitioning into kids worship. Right. Right. But I do think having children included in the worship service in a weekly basis is a very positive thing mm -hmm. if your church yeah. can do that. Yeah. I think that it gets um, it gives the children an opportunity to participate in the worship service. I think it makes them feel seen. 
Mm-hmm. I think that it gives the church an opportunity to see how your children's ministry is growing mm-hmm. and the numbers that you have. Right. When all those kids sort of get up and rush yeah. to the front. Yeah. To the front. <laughs> um, you know, it, it gives um, a lot of opportunity to show how important children are to your ministry as a whole. Mm-hmm. And it also gives you an opportunity to be able to have an opening with possible volunteers as they Mm. see the children come forward. Right. I love it when children's ministers can be the one that leads the children's sermon Mm -hmm. just because I am a firm believer in preschool ministers and children's ministers being in the worship service and being seen on the stage up front, however you want to say (laughs) up front of, Uh. of them being there so that church members can see them. You know, you've heard me tell the story before that uh, we had uh, visited a new church and we were doing the Wednesday night dinner and we were meeting people that we had never met before. And so they asked, were we volunteering? And and I made the statement that, yes, you know, I, I'm serving with Miss Virginia in the preschool ministry (laughs) and for them to look at me and say, who and I was like, your, your preschool minister, like I, I am serving with your preschool minister. And they had, and, and these are people that had been at the church for 20 years or more. Yeah. They didn't know the name of their own preschool minister because that particular yeah. one had never been, she didn't ever leave the preschool hall. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't even know who she was. Yep. So I am a huge proponent <laughs> of the only way you are going to meet yeah. new volunteers, the only way you're going to recruit new helpers, the only way that you're going to be a real part of your ministry is if mm-hmm. they see you occasionally. Yeah. And so yeah. I feel like a children's sermon is a great way. Great way to do that. To yeah. To be able to do that because they see you, they hear you, mm-hmm. they get to know you, you get to tell your stories, you know, all this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that a children's sermon during service needs to be more nuanced than just an object lesson. And a lot of churches do just have an object lesson that doesn't have anything to do with the sermon mm-hmm. during that time. Mm-hmm. And I really do feel yeah. like that it's an opportunity to be able to take the message mm-hmm. that you have in your sermon mm-hmm. and make it understandable for the mm-hmm. children so that they can make a connection to it. Yes. And so I think it's, I think we do a disservice when we just try to come up with something cute mm-hmm. and have some sort of object that we're, you know, we're using as opposed to really thinking through how we're making the children's sermon part of the overall worship service. Because you also have to remember all the adults in the service are listening to that as well. If this children's right. sermon is a part of the adult service. And so you are communicating your philosophies on yeah. what you think children can learn, what you think children can, what, what you think children need to hear. Right. Um, and especially if you are just like what you said, Val, taking the sermon and presenting it in a way that is digestible for children. That is also Mm -hmm. beneficial to people in your congregation who are new believers, who are new to the Bible, new to the life of the church. And so presenting it in that way benefits Mm -hmm. not just your children, but your church as a whole. And it communicates more of, you know, what you believe children can learn are capable of learning what they need to hear. Um, and so it's, you know, the adults are listening to that as well. They so. are. And so I think, I think it's really important that it be really a part of your entire worship experience and not mm-hmm. just something that's sort of tagged on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it needs to be intentional. If you're going yes. to do that, it needs to be an intentional way of doing that. And yeah. I do think if you do not have a kid's worship service, if, if the older children, if first through sixth grade, first through fifth grade, however your ministry runs that, mm-hmm. if they are included in the worship service, I think having a children's sermon mm-hmm. is a great way to help engage them during mm-hmm. that time. And yes. so, you know, their parents can, they can go up front and then they can come back and sit with their parents for the rest of the service. But it, it's a great way to, to kind of engage them. One of the things that we both noticed, the conversation that we saw this week was that that people are really struggling with how do you make that transition if you have a children's sermon mm-hmm. and you have a kid's worship? 
Mm-hmm. Have you noticed some concern there? Right. Or like if you have kids with parents through the music portion of the worship service, mm-hmm. and then they transition over to kids worship during the sermon time, mm-hmm. you know, asking lots of questions of, you know, how do we do this securely? How do we do mm-hmm. this with like a check-in? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so, you know, mm-hmm. I think, and then we were talking about it before we, before we press record, you know, and one of the things that we were saying with this is that you need to be consistent either with, okay, the kids check in to kids worship first and then volunteers bring them over for the music portion and then volunteers take them back for kids worship or kids check in and stay with parents mm-hmm. and then parents bring them to you after the right. music portion. Right. But what you don't want to do is try to in the middle <laughs> have kids transitioning, you know, in right. that worship service right. from parents to you and, and mm-hmm. who's in charge. And, right. you know, the parent thinks, Valerie was saying this, the parent thinks Jimmy's with you, but really he's run off and who knows right. where he is and you right. think he's with parents. So, right. yeah. Well, and that's what, you know, for us, safety and security is always vitally important. Yes. And I know that it's really easy to become comfortable with your Mm -hmm. church family and with your building and just think, oh, it's okay. I saw Tommy's dad. Tommy waved him over and he comes with me and that's great. But as you grow, especially, it becomes less organic to be Mm -hmm. able to do that because because you don't know kids or you have visitors Mm -hmm. or there's all of these family dynamics that could be happening that you're not aware of or grandma may not be allowed to pick up anymore and you don't know that. So you have all of those dynamics that we talk about all the time with with check-in systems and why you have to have Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. We have a whole episode on them. Whole episode (laughs) on that if you want to hear. We talk about it all the time, but we also have a whole episode about it. But the, the deal is this, you, you have to have some way for the parents to be dropping off, taking mm-hmm. something with them that they have to have coming mm-hmm. back to mm-hmm. pick up. Yes. And if you just sort of say, okay, all the kids can go to kids church and you don't have that, then mm-hmm. if you have visitors, you don't know the parents when they're picking up, there's just too many variables. Yeah. And so for me, and I have, I've had this situation before I've had that where I've had both of those things happen in my experience where we have done the children's sermon and then the kids were dismissed during the children's sermon. Mm -hmm. And then I've also had where the children go in for the worship music and then leave. And Mm -hmm. there's not a a children's sermon, but they come in for, so I've had both of those situations. And, Mm -hmm. And again, I think for me, you, you have to make that decision like a lot of times what we would have happen is that the kids would be checked in at the beginning of Bible study. Their parents would come and pick them up to go into worship service. So the kids would still have their sticker on the parents would give me their card, but the kids would still have their sticker on with, and they would let me know we're bringing them back. They would Mm -hmm. take them into worship service for whatever portion of the worship service. Mm -hmm. Then they would bring them back and drop them off. Mm-hmm. And we would give them the card again and then the mm-hmm. kids would come in. And that way the parents didn't have right. to recheck in the kids by signing anything or filling mm-hmm. anything out. They literally are just giving me the card or the mm-hmm. matching sticker and then, mm-hmm. you know, taking it back again. Mm-hmm. Um, I have heard as I've done conferences about this in the past, I've had children's ministry leaders ask me, well, the pastor doesn't like the parents coming back in. Mm. And they feel like it's disruptive. So they just want the kids to leave. And so I've worked with pastors, set up the worship service so that you have the least disruption as possible. Mm -hmm. So maybe after the children's sermon, you have one more worship song, or that's when you have offering, or that's when you do something where people are already moving. So the parent leaving and coming back is not as much of a disruption. Mm-hmm. but helping the pastor to understand mm-hmm. that security is so important. And so yeah. you, you really need to have that. Now, the other way that you can do it is, is to have volunteers bring the kids in to the worship center for the mm-hmm. children's sermon or for the music, and then they take them back. So they, mm-hmm. they never leave the children's volunteers mm-hmm. responsibility influence. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So they're right. always with them. Right. Um, 
but it's like, but, you want to have those clear lines of responsibility. Yeah. Who parents responsible are responsible or volunteers are responsible. What we don't want is this weird gray area right. where kids are just kind of unleashed. Right. <laughs> so and that's the point. That's why sometimes uh, the volunteer using the volunteers mm -hmm. sound really good, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure they're trained well and they know their yeah. responsibility because yeah. that is putting a lot of responsibility on them to mm -hmm. have that responsibility of bringing those the kids, kids in and taking yeah. them back. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we do it for vacation Bible school. We do it at other times where we move mm -hmm. kids around. So, you know, so we're, we're very accustomed to that. It's yeah. not impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was telling Virginia, I was very blessed one time where I had a children's worship and we had a balcony in the church. Mm -hmm. And so we just portioned off a part of the balcony. The kids were able to come into the balcony for special events. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I probably should have waited for this, but, and so that way the volunteers brought them in, they sat mm -hmm. through the part of service that we wanted them to sit through. And then we, mm -hmm. you know, we took them back out. So it's finding however your design right. Right. for your worship center, for your building, mm -hmm. you know, because if you are bringing kids from another building into a, some of that can be complicated. So right. you do have to really sit down with the church staff and say, what is reasonable for how our mm -hmm. children can be involved mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the worship service? Mm -hmm. So there are a variety of ways you can do a children's sermon, a variety of ways to kind of bring the kids in and take them out. There is no one way to do it because everybody's situation is different. Everyone's right. community is different. Everyone's building is different. But the key things that we want you to remember is how can it best encourage worship with your kids mm -hmm. and what is the safest way that mm -hmm. you can do it and yes. still engage well. Yep. Amen. So now let's, let's talk for just a minute about having kids worship in, mm -hmm. in this situation. We're going to kind of talk about grades one through let's say six, just because there's a lot of people who still have sixth grade in their, in their children's ministry. But if we look at how do we do kids worship, Mm -hmm. For first grade through sixth grade, what should that look like? What should they be doing during the worship hour? You know, let, let's talk about that just a little bit. Because again, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of really important issues that we have to yeah. work through. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that we have to think about with our philosophy of mm -hmm. ministry and what our church family wants to see. And decisions that we want to make intentionally and not just sort of like fall back into because that's how we've always done it or, right. you know, whatever, just being intentional and thoughtful in the process right. of how we do these things. Yeah. Yes, because the thing that I have seen that has concerned me more than anything else about children's worship is that often because of the pressure from all of the other responsibilities that we have, mm -hmm. that that can tend to be more freestyle than intentional. Mm -hmm. And so I have worked with a lot of leaders that have just basically kind of said, well, we just rely on videos or we rely on movies or we yeah. rely on, you know, whatever we have, you know, we just play games during that time or we let them be outside or we just do. And I think again, we have to think about what our children are learning mm -hmm. about worship yes, and what they're learning about their time yes, at church. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, if we try to make it as fun as possible and fun is our main focus, we are doing a disservice yeah. for when those fourth graders or sixth graders or seventh graders or college mm -hmm. age students go into worship for the very first time because their yeah. church has this you separate, know, for separate service for them, yeah. very siloed yeah. children's ministry, very siloed youth ministry where they have mm -hmm. a very, you know, they are walking into a worship service mm. that they are not familiar with at all and seems very foreign to them. Right. And they're not prepared for. They're yeah. really not. And so I think that the main thing about children's worship is to make it structured. You can still do games. You can still have right. fun. You can still show clips of videos. You can still do those kinds of things because mm -hmm. I mean, quite honestly, we do that in the main worship center sometimes, you know, we <laughs> yeah, have those yeah. kinds of elements. So I think it's important to do that, but mm -hmm. I think that we do want to have a, a schedule, a structure mm -hmm. so that the kids do learn worship, 
-hmm. they learn offering, they learn prayer, they learn message. Yeah. They learn life application. Yeah. And so I think it's really important that we have a very structured material for them Mm -hmm. during that time. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that and exactly what you're saying, because it is easy to either do it how we've always done it because that's how we've always done it. Right. Or just like what you're saying to focus on, you know, the fun value and the engagement. But I think you're right because we have to think longer term than that. We have to think about setting our kids up for success in the future. Um, Just like what you're saying, like teaching them how to worship, um, how to engage, you know, worshipfully at church. Um, and so I think being intentional and strategic and not that we're always going to get it right. Not that we're always going to do it perfectly. Not that every Sunday is going to be the exact same. Um, but being intentional and strategic with that time that we have with kids. Right. Well, and I think that again, this is something where you have to look at your classrooms and your building and what Mm -hmm. you have available to you as you're structuring that. I think it's important for you to think about the age groups that you have, because Mm -hmm. quite honestly, even though a lot of people expect that you can just put first through sixth graders in a room and teach them easily, it is a very big difference. And it is a very wide, you know, anyone that's working with children know how very different a first grader is from a sixth grader. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to really think about how do we use the space that we have and the volunteers that we have Mm -hmm. so that we are making this as valuable for the kids Mm -hmm. as it is. So it's not just we're watching the kids while the adults worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. But where we are helping the children to understand worship themselves. Mm -hmm. And if that means, again, doing a rotation like you do at Vacation Bible School, where maybe you have first through third grade in together and fourth through sixth grade in together, where you do a a, maybe like a, a break off kind of Bible study. Mm-hmm. So with the older kids, you start with a little life application and mm-hmm. a little Bible study while the first through third graders are worshiping mm-hmm. with the music and maybe a game. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, in hearing the the message and then rotate them to their mm-hmm. small groups mm-hmm. and yep. bring the fourth, fifth and sixth graders in to do worship with music and Mm -hmm. have a little game and have Mm -hmm. a message Mm -hmm. so that that way you're able to use your facility to the best Mm -hmm. that you can, but also so that you can break them up a little bit more Mm -hmm. so that they can have that more specific age group experience Yes, Yes. so that they're worshiping with their peers, but they're learning as they're worshiping with their peers. And so Mm -hmm. I think that that's just really vital for, for us to make sure that's happening. And you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And I know that volunteers are an issue. So again, you know, looking at your space, you know, Mm -hmm. using literally using centers with the older kids where you are just having them broken up into smaller groups to do things together, you know, Mm -hmm. finding those moments where you can engage them because, um, you know, it, it is, it is not easy to have that wide of an age range for that long yes. of a period of time. Yes, yes. Because the needs of a preteen who's in fifth or sixth grade are mm-hmm. so different than the needs of a first or second grader who's right. maybe learning to read. Right. And so, right. yeah, that's such a wide yeah. age range. So yeah. it's finding those ways that you can make it intentional and, mm-hmm. and make it fun because we do, it's not that I'm saying that I don't want it to be right. fun. We're not I anti-fun. To enjoy, no, <laughs> but I do think that we do need to help them learn yeah. a more structured way of worship because, and, and honestly, it's because that's what they're going to be moving into mm-hmm. as they grow. Yes. Yes. Whether they're going in there at middle school because mm-hmm. your church doesn't have a worship for youth. Mm -hmm. or whether or not they're going in at college age, I think it's, it's Mm -hmm. unrealistic for us not to have them. And I think that that's why too, for me, you know, I've I've had this conversation with children's ministers a lot. I, you know, where they have said to me, I don't believe in having children's worship, but our church requires me to have children's worship. And I've, I've said this, I've had those moments where I have to make decisions on what hill I'm going to die on. Mm, You've heard mm -hmm, me say that mm -hmm. a lot. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I really do believe as a children's minister, a yeah. lot of your decisions are, are, are decisions that you're making. This is important enough to me that I will walk away if I have to. Mm-hmm. This is not important enough for me to walk away if I have to. Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. can I make this work for me mm-hmm. when I want to see something different? Right. And so one of the things that I've always worked very closely with my pastor to make sure that we could do is that even if I had a children's worship service mm-hmm. at a church, I wanted the children to experience the big moments with their families, with their mm-hmm. church family yeah. in the worship service. Yes. And so I've always had those conversations where I've said, if we have a baptism, then I'd like the kids to be there to see the baptism. So I mm-hmm. would like to bring the kids in for that. Mm-hmm. Now, I will tell you, I have also served at large enough churches where if we did have a baptism every week, yeah. I did yeah. sort of make it, okay, if it's a baptism it's like a in their kid. age group or if it's yes. a child or maybe yes. if it's a family member or, you know, yes. like we would kind of work yeah. with that. And then I've had somewhere, like I had one church where I was um, helping them set up some things. They actually had a stream of the worship service available on televisions in the classrooms. Hmm. And so what they did is that they, if there was a baptism, they would show the baptism on Hmm. the screen from Hmm. the, you know, from the live service. Mm hmm because they couldn't take the kids into the worship service mm-hmm. to see that, but they wanted them to. So they found a way to incorporate it in. Right. Right. So it's right. however you can work out incorporating this in, but I think it's important mm-hmm. for the kids to see baptisms. Yeah. Um, I think it's important for them to see communion, even if they yeah. haven't reached the age to be able to participate in communion or if they haven't accepted Christ yet for them to see it happening. Right. I think yes. according to whatever your church doctrine might be about that, mm-hmm. I think it's important for the kids to see it, even if mm-hmm. they can't participate in it. Yes. I think it's important for families to worship together at Christmas yes. and Easter and Thanksgiving yeah. and all of those big moments. Yeah. So I think finding ways that the kids can sometimes throughout the year mm-hmm. be encouraged to be part of a family worship experience. Yes is vitally important because again, that does give them again, that picture of this is what adult worship looks like. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it helps them do that. Um, I think having kids be allowed to lead in worship occasionally. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Cause like one of the things our church does, I think is pretty common is fifth Sundays, you know, kids are in the worship service. Um, But then also, yeah, like having, worship services where kids are the ones leading the music and with some adult supervision, taking up the right. offering and right. all that kind of stuff. Right. So, and greeting yeah. at the doors. Yes. My kids loved Children's yes. Sunday because they loved handing out bulletins. Mm-hmm. They, and I know we don't use bulletins a lot anymore, but again, <laughs> yeah. being at the door to welcome people as they come in, that was like mm-hmm. a huge deal to my kids. Yes. And, some, and some churches, and according to my numbers, Sometimes that was just my fourth and fifth graders or my third, fourth and fifth graders. Sometimes it was my first grade through fifth grade. It was just according to the church and the numbers and the years. Right. But the idea of having them be a part of the worship service, I think is Mm -hmm. huge. And just the value, just like what we were talking about with the children's sermon, just the value of having the kids being visible to right. the congregation as a whole with right. people who may not have children in the children's ministry. Um, but just seeing, having that visual representation of, yeah. you know, how many kids you have, what they're doing, what they're learning, the songs that they're singing. And so that's just such a valuable way for the rest of the church body to stay connected yeah. with your children's ministry. It really is. It is. So well, this has been a fun conversation. I hope that this has not been stressful for anyone to listen to. I really, really did pray for this to be helpful and encouraging yeah. because I know how confusing this can be for a lot of people because there are so many mm-hmm. options, so many different ways you can do it, so many different things that you can do. And so you just want to walk into it prayerfully Amen. with a heart to help kids mm-hmm. learn how to worship and give them the opportunity to worship. That is just incredibly important for us to do. So thank you so much for taking time to listen today, for being a part of our conversation. We would love to hear your thoughts. 
We would love it if you have more questions or you have ideas for things that we could chat about in the future. Please email those to us, make mm -hmm. comments, send that information to us. We hope that we can meet you where you are and help you with what you need. Uh, please like and subscribe and all the things. Um, you know, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and YouTube. And we have our blog that um, is going out now and Pinterest and Instagram. So um, find us on one of the socials <laughs> and let us know um, how you're doing because we would love to just be able to encourage and meet you. We hope you have a wonderful week and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.